it's something very, very special. I mean, this is a group of orchestras playing together that you would not really find anywhere in the world. You'd have thought that the Czech Philharmonic are playing at five o'clock today. <laughs> also, my dear, my dear friends there. Uh, and I also see what is happening also that you are bringing in more orchestras from around Romania. I think this is also a wonderful thing that this is. And also show the world uh, what there is. So, no, a great thing. And we are very happy to be here. And of course, for me, this is, these are the last two conduct concerts I conduct as the music director of the London Symphony Orchestra, although I'll, I'll come back many times. But it's my last two concerts as boss, as it were. Uh, and so this is also very special and very emotional for us. Do you remember your first um, a presence here in the festival, sir? Yeah, absolutely. It was with the Berlin Philharmonic, uh, Shostakovich's Fourth Symphony. And I looked at this wonderful and terrible building uh, with all its history. And I looked at the audience and I thought, oh, these people know what Shostakovich's Fourth Symphony is about. And I remember there were people, I mean, you must have paid a lot of money to the fire people to keep away. Everybody was sitting on the floor, hanging off the walls. But when I looked at the audience, I felt, oh yeah, these people understand this music probably more than anyone on the planet these days because it speaks, uh, it speaks of what, what there was here in the worst times. Uh, and I don't think I ever felt such a, a powerful audience response. Uh, you can feel it as though it's behind your back, holding you. So that I remember so clearly. And I mean, it's probably the only concert building in the world that actually looks like that music sometimes sounds. Mm. <laughs> uh, and it's, so it's one of the better things to come out of times that were so hard. You can feel in the orchestra, you can feel how people are breathing when they aren't, when they breathe out. It is a, it's an extraordinary thing. I, I think you, you become so sensitized to everything that you feel what the response is. If people are uncomfortable or if they're concentrated or if they're not concentrated, even if there's not sound, how we know it, I don't know. But you would get the same response from anyone you talk to in the orchestra. I think the fact that uh, one of the things every orchestra does here is to come and play an esco. I think this is fantastic because the orchestras get the pieces in their repertoire and realize, okay, this is extraordinary music. It's its own thing. You can't really say, he's like anyone else. And so, again, you have to conceptually <laughs> work out what this is. But of course, I think it made a huge difference. Uh, it, it's, it's like old fashioned medieval farming, what you're doing it, in playing these pieces. It's like you're putting the seeds out into the fields and, and watching things grow. Anescus is one of the only composers who would write a piece so completely and then stop in a second. Uh, that look, most composers find they start pieces and they start it in sketches, uh, and then there's, it's, they find it doesn't work. But to have a piece of nearly nine minutes, totally orchestrated and so beautiful, which he then felt, ah, enough, whatever. One, one doesn't know. I mean, there must have been a really special personality that you could go that far and just say enough. I think it's a person just a, of so many ridiculous gifts that he could afford for that not to happen. Uh, it's a beautiful piece, uh, a very romantic piece, gorgeously orchestrated. Blessing Michael Tilson Thomas found a way to actually finish it uh, so that it doesn't just stop in mid-air, but a wonderful discovery for us. Of course, I did the, the Romanian Rapsters and the, the first a lot, but also Isis, this beautiful piece with female chorus. I, I know the symphonies a little and they're extraordinarily fine, but 
my goodness, you need to spend a long time to unlock their secrets. Mahler is the reason I became a conductor. I, would, I just grew up in this time of the Mahler revival, where I lived in Liverpool. It was unbelievably the first European orchestra that played a complete cycle of Mahler symphonies with the same conductor. Uh, it's hard to believe that that was true in the 60s and early 70s, but it had only been done before once in America, in Salt Lake City of, of, of all places. So we were this generation of teenagers coming and discovering these pieces and not knowing what was going to hit us next. And now it's so much part of the center of our, uh, our musical life sometimes it, one feels maybe it's almost played too much uh, because the emotional impact is so great that also, and you must play it with that kind of emotion. It shouldn't be a normal thing. Um, this is a piece that we have played here a lot with the orchestra, um, although not for a few years. And it feels very deep in everybody's DNA. Uh, and this is an orchestra which is really happy to go into the depths of risk-taking and emotion, so it's perfect for them. Both of these two pieces that we play, Which one? Mahler, Mahler and Messi, and, and indeed Enescu, these are people of complete candor who are telling you everything that is deepest in their soul. There's no holding back. Uh, that's generosity and that's it's a, I think it's a great motto. This is an astonishing festival. And this isn't Eastern Europe. This is Europe. And we are all together in this, and even more in these days with this extraordinary and ridiculous war happening. We have to remember we are Europeans. And you are doing so much for not only your own music, but for all of us to bring us together. And we have to treasure that.